Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, and I guess I thought maybe I'd start doing some more videos on repair and the business side because I'm starting to psych some of you guys out. <laughs> but where else can you go to a channel that you get all this different advice on stuff from your love life to your business life to your personal life? Hey, we'll hit it all. So today I thought we'd look at a couple specialty tools and how we use them and why it's good to have them. Now, if you're first just starting out, I don't want you to rush out and buy a bunch of crap, all right? But as you go and you make money doing side hustles on working on people's machines, then you want to start investing in decent tools. So I've got kind of an array of different tools here. So stick with us and we'll be right back. So the first thing I thought I would talk to you about is simply a test light. Now test lights come in a different flavors, you know, some are a little bit better than others. This one's got the light bulbs in it and stuff. But the idea with these is when you're trying to hen peck to find out if you've got power, you know, either on one side of the fuse, the other side of the fuse, etc, etc. You want to clamp this to the battery, to the ground. And then when you touch, if you hit something that has power on it, it will light up in here. So it tells you that you're getting power on this side and on this side if you're doing a fuse. If you're checking your solenoid, you're checking one side to see where it is, and then you have it over here, you hit the switch to see if it's coming across. But these will always be clipped to the ground for what we do. And like I say, there's couple different styles and they're made so they're really sharp so that you can penetrate the outer film on wire to see if you've got power spark testers now this one here I just got from rotary so I haven't tried it out yet but there are a lot of different ones out there uh, and a lot of different price ranges I per personally like this style and we get them right through Harbor Freight. They're not expensive, but like six bucks. And you can get the straight boot or the, the elbow boot. We have both of them. And this one here, we're gonna try out this week to see how well it works. But it's another handy thing to have in the shop. All right. This is gonna be working on a lot of weed trimmers and you know your smaller two strokes and stuff like that a lot of your four strokes that are handheld probably the most important bit you're going to have is the 27 torx and what i did was i went ahead and i ordered some for my impact drill So that I can just pop them in or out. Get it open here. And a lot of times when you're dealing with this, you're going to find that you need a longer one to get down in. So these just simply pop in and off you go. Now I've got the regular length like this which doesn't usually amount to squat then i've got them up to here but i end up having to order the seven inch just to make sure i could get down where i needed to be and what i also did was i ordered a couple of t handles and just the 27 torque i've got the complete set of metric and sae allen wrenches that are the t handle but i don't have the torques but what I found is this is probably the, the most common one that you're going to run into. So it's kind of handy to have two. It doesn't hurt if you're only just one, but two is better. All right. So this here, 
if I can get it open. It's put out by Rotary, but you can get it from a number of different companies. And all this is is a gap for spark spark plugs. And it will tell you if you want it 0 0.035, 0 0.040, 0 .040, and you can adjust depending on the gap that the plug calls for. And then you can also take with this, hook it, <clears throat> and bend that up to get the right correctness for the gauge. But these are made from Rotary. They're made in the U.S. Handy to have. Carburetor tools. You never have enough of these guys. And a lot of them are coming through now where they're not adjustable. They're throwaways. They're preset. Can't. That's all to do with saving the planet and the EPA. Before we go any further, this here is also, this is a Craftsman spark gauge to, to set the, the gauges at the correct one. Yeah, this one here I got from Craftsman years ago. But these come in all shapes and sizes, half moon, full moon, you know. And I got this set on Amazon. And a lot of times when you order a carburetor off from eBay from China, they'll send you one of these to fit the carburetor that you ordered. So you can adjust it. But again, a lot of them that I'm seeing coming now are not adjustable. So either they work or they don't work. The thing to be careful of when you're buying carburetors online is to make sure that you look at their picture and look at their carburetor. Because just because they say it'll fit does not mean it will fit. We've had a lot of them come in and had to ship them back. A multimeter. This way you can check ohms. You can see where the voltage range are. They're good all around. You can get ones that are less expensive than this one this one here is a harbor freight it's a smaller one it's whatever i mean i don't have any preference i have two because if i get a reading on this and i'm not confident that's the right reading i bring out the second one But again, they're handy to have. And then lastly is a engine tachometer. And I got the touchless. You can go either direction. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. And you can either come up close to the chainsaw or really whatever you're working on. And it will tell you how many RPMs that you're getting out of that machine. <laughs> And it's handy to keep the directions around because it tells you what setting to have it on when you're testing. And then, you know, for the two stroke one cylinder, it'll go up to 19,000. Now, each piece of equipment is going to be different. You know, I guess the average chainsaw in decent shape is around 12. That's what I got yesterday using this. 12,000 RPMs on a customer chainsaw to see if how well it worked. So this is just a few things. I'm going to do a couple of videos because I mean if I try to overload you with a bunch of stuff, you know, at least for me anyways, if somebody tries to push a lot of stuff onto me, I don't even, I don't remember half of it. So if we can break it down into parts. You know, carburetor, electrical, this falls in line with these. You know, and these testers are electrical. Spark plug gaps. And your torque head. All things that you're going to find that you use quite a bit in the shop. So on that note, you guys have a great day. We'll catch you on the next video. If you find that what we have to hear is offering something to you that you can use, if you could, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out and helps us grow. All right, we'll see you later.